you know uh, there is a division between life and death obviously it's for us and obviously it's for the tiny cells that make us so cell needs to decide whether the cell wants to live or cell want to die it depends on the physiological i mean cellular conditions inside the cell sometimes the cell decide to live i mean most of the time it decides to live and grow and divide to produce new generation of cells and sometimes when the cell is run out of all the all the resources it wants to die so that comes uh, or that actually conclude us about how we actually work and how the inside the cell the things are actually work so in those cases there are two different pathways inside the cell that denotes the cell that is telling the cell when to grow and divide and when to die so we call it two different way we call it a uh, living pathway though it's not kind of official name but i'm calling it as living pathway another one is a death pathway which definitely has a name it is called apoptosis you probably heard this name this is also called as the programmed cell death that means uh, the cell's own machinery to kill itself and that is necessary for certain cases when uh, all the resources are kind of gone and cell pass through all the cell division stages and finally cells nothing had to lose and all this thing cell want to die in that situation so uh, cell need to decide when they want to be in the living phase or the death phase now it depends on the different cell signaling processes so there are different cell signaling processes called as apoptosis pathway which actually conducts final apoptosis phases i mean the killing phases of the cell but if you look at the living phase there are also set of signaling pathways working together to make a cell li live uh, for certain time and generations now uh, we are interested about living pathway here a little bit more because in this video i'll be talking about how cell decides to live and what are the different cascades that are correlated with each other that is guiding the cell through the living pathway and those are pi3 kinase akt and mtor so this is these are the three things that are related with each other and called as the living cell pathway pi3 kinase akt and mtor combinatory pathways so one single pathway but they related to i mean they are in recruiting all these different molecules like pi3k akt and mtor together to finally provides us the idea of cell growth and cell proliferation so the cell can live so for all these things to occur definitely for a living pathway to occur they require a signaling molecule like any other pathway in your life if you study you ask you two questions always one is what is the signaling molecule second thing what is the signal receptor molecules because obviously there should be an external signal and a receptor to convey the signal inside the cell so these are the two question once you get them this problem becomes easy and also you need to think what are the function of that pathway so i've told you the function of this complete three stage of pathway three different pathway I mean, pi3 k akt and mtor pathway they are very much related with themselves uh, i also have separate video for each of the pathways like pi3 k akt and mtor but if you want to know detail about each of this pathway you can also go for those videos and and look at those videos but this is a combinatory thing and i'm telling you how all these pathways are working together to give us the living condition of a cell so in this case the cell signaling molecule the signaling molecule that we have are growth factors in all these cases of pi3k kt and mtor everything because as they are in the downstream processes they also have a same signaling molecule that is growth factors it can be epidermal growth factor it can be platelet derived growth factor it can be fibroblast growth factor and so on many more type of growth factors are possible so once the growth factor is there now obviously there should be a receptor and the receptor in this case are enzymatic type of receptors and the example is receptor tyrosine kinase or rtk now i will encourage you to understand how rtk actually functions by going to my channel you will find a video on how rtk functions properly uh, and you can come back to watch this video or i'm going to tell you a little bit about how it functions but not in details here rtk are two different subunits i mean they are transmembrane proteins embedded in the cell membrane there are two different subunits around together and once the signaling molecules uh, and the ligand bind with this receptor that is the epidermal growth factor for example say bind with the receptor then one of the tyrosine uh, they have the functionality to uh, autophosphorylate themselves and that's a very good uh, ability here so one of this uh, tyrosine subunit uh, tyrosine receptor kinase subunit phosphorylate itself and then that unit will phosphorylate another one and another 
so it's a kind of cross phosphorylation that means once they get the signal this tyrosine subunit phosphorylate this one and this unit phosphorylate this one so it's kind of cross phosphorylation that is done here once the cross phosphorylation is done then they activate what is called pip pi3 kinase now the thing is here pi3 kinase gets activated and once pi pi3 kinase gets activated from this tyrosine kinase phosphorylated condition this pi3 kinase will convert this pip2 into pip3 now pip2 is phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate or bisphosphate and this is also another uh, membrane embedded proteins membrane embedded molecules present there so this pip2 phosphatidyl inositol not actually proteins kind of lipid molecule there phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate so because they have two different phosphate units now this pi3 kinase add another phosphate group to this pip2 to convert it to pip3 now previously it was two phosphate now kinase add one for more phosphate to make it pip3 so, so now we have a three phosphate to the phosphatidyl inositol there so one uh, there are three phosphate and pip3 is made now this pathway is conducted conveyed by pi3 kinase but it can also be blocked or inhibited by another molecule called p10 that is also found in the cytosol so once pip3 is made once pip3 is active then pip3 will further activate a protein called akt remember via another protein called pdk1 or something but it activates akt now that akt has several functionality uh, majorly two major functionality one is uh, helping the cell to proliferate and grow and divide and second thing is that to also inhibit the uh, the apoptotic pathway molecules so then it activates and recruits ar uh, other type of proteins there and also it finally activates another protein by phosphorylating it that that is mTOR once mTOR is activated mTOR is also having three different possibilities I mean three different functionality one is it helps in protein synthesis and cell to grow proliferate and divide second thing it also helps in the cell cycle progression and proliferation and third thing is uh, the survival or decreased apoptosis so it helps to block the apoptotic pathway initiators and inhibit all those apoptotic pathway initiators so that the apoptosis should not possible inside the cell I mean in case of the cell so ultimately along with this PITK which is the first kind of mediators which initiates the pathway and finally being completed by AKT recruiting mTOR we bring two things one is the growth rapid growth and proliferation second is the cell cycle actually three things and third is the inhibition of apoptosis these are the three things that we observe and is possible due to the interaction played by PIC kinase AKT and mTOR all together so that's why it's very very important it's a survival mechanism of cell that cell provides PIC AKT and mTOR to work together to get the cell grow and divide all the time so that's kind of it guys and I hope that's helpful if you like the video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and uh, share this video with your friends thank you